Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Behind the Space Bar. This is the podcast for playback engineers or anyone that performs on stage with Ableton Live. I want you to imagine for a moment, put yourself in this situation. You get hired to help a, a music director for a major artist. It's a year long a run of shows. And the very first show with that artist, the music director gets sick. And you get called upon as the person helping with playback and helping set up their gear to step on stage and step into that person's shoes. Would you be prepared? Would you be ready to make that happen? Well, you're gonna hear exactly how a student of mine, Dave Dombrowski, um, was perfectly prepared for that exact moment because of the time and the effort he put into preparing for this gig. Um, you're gonna be introduced to Dave. He's uh, honestly a star student of mine. When I think of how I will be judged and my success will be judged, it'll be judged not on accomplishments I've made. It will not be judged on uh, things I have done, but it will be judged by the success of my students. And if that is true, then Dave means I'm going to be judged a successful person. You're going to hear Dave's story as he got started as a successful gigging drummer, but realized there was something missing in his skill set. And so he decided to explore the world of becoming a playback engineer. He dove into my site. Um, he spent some time with me in something I call my coaching cohort. And I led him through literally the process of starting to running a successful show with tracks in Ableton Live. And because of those skills and because of his effort and just being an all around great guy, he was able to land a gig traveling the world with Avril Lavigne. And he found himself in that very situation that I started today's episode with. He literally was the very first show of this year long run of shows with Avril where the music director was sick and they said, Dave, you've got to hop in, you've got to play keys, you've got to run playback for this show. And you'll have to hear how it went, whether it was a success or not, and exactly how he felt to do that. So if you're wondering and going, oh gosh, I can't imagine what that would feel like, you've got to listen to today's episode to see how Dave made it through. Now, I'll be back in just a moment to uh, share some tips and tricks and some ways that you can have the same success that Dave had and some ways that I think I can help make that happen. But um, I'm super excited to inter introduce you to Dave and let's hear his story now. David, thanks so much for joining me, man. Glad you're here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Will. So um, I don't know how many of these you've listened to. The further I go, the further uh, preparation people get, which I think is unfair. But I always like starting these with probably the most difficult question we'll have the entire conversation because I okay. think it helps set a tone for the whole conversation. So sure. the question to you is, and again, uh, you know, real, real easy one here to start everything off. The question to you is, what do you feel like is your unfair advantage? What's something that you do that comes really easily to you that other people struggle with or something as you look back over the last three years of your life, you go, you can point to all oh, this one thing that I do really well or that comes easily to me is a key to my success. So if you had to pick one, maybe two things, what would you say that would be? Um, man, I know this is going to be kind of like a more of a vague question, but like it's, it's really like time. It comes more like with time management. Mm. And like writing things out and, and kind of being being like, I'm really good at pre preparing for preparation for whatever situation comes in. Like, I don't know if that. Yeah. So but, like I'm really I'm really good at just structuring my days and figuring out like what tasks I have to accomplish for the week, the day, whatever that is. Like, I've always been very good at um, prior you know, putting everything in, in, in perspective that way. Yeah. Yeah. That's and that's been something you've always you feel like you've kind of naturally always been good at that. Yeah, I think it I think it just comes from the like my upbringing and also like I, I was always involved in sports. So there was always like, mm. you know, like that discipline of structure. Yeah. So yeah. I've always kind of molded that into like all my aspects in life, especially in music, you know, um, yeah, just been able to always have that like structure of preparation right? and like kind of like I don't want to say over over prepare. But yeah, just yeah. being prepared for every scenario that you might not even expect to happen. So. If it's yeah. like learning, if it's learning 10 songs, I might learn the whole catalog Yeah, because you just never know. That's it. That's a wise thing. Cause I always, um, I always try to talk about, there's a difference between like preparing for an event and preparing for a situation. Mm -hmm. And, and you said that perfectly well, like an event is, Hey David, can we hire you to come play drums? Here's our set list. And then you show up to the gig and the artist turns around and calls the song that you, that wasn't on that set list, but because you learned the whole catalog or because you learned 30 songs, your odds of being prepared for that situation are much higher than just preparing for that individual event, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and I think That's the awesome. way that why I'm like that is because, you know, I do sometimes. It does take me a little bit longer to learn things, or you know, if I have to write things out or go over a couple things a couple times. So that's why I always try to structure things to, cause like I know in my mind, like how, how it works, where it will, how long it will take to prepare for certain things. So I just, that's how that's, yeah. So that'd be like my own, that'd be kind of like my skill set, I guess, of just being, being kind of structurally prepared. That's great. That's cool. I mean, that's, you're the first person that has said uh, that specific thing, but man, that is, that is a, that, that's something I struggle with that I like, aspire to get better at but that's really really cool i mean that's such a great life skill even outside of music you know that's super super good so yeah i'm a um, i'm a creature of habit i guess <laughs> okay yeah yeah that's great so um okay now that we've got the hard question out of the way sure. uh I, I want you to um i want you to introduce yourself to everyone first i want to tee this up to say uh, i'm super excited for this conversation because david was the very first student of my running tracks with ableton live coaching cohort that i ever did very first student, um, you were the guinea pig. Uh, and as we're, as we're talking about this, I'm super excited. The timing couldn't be better because I'm rolling um, all the coaching cohort stuff back out. Oh, and great. so um, it, it's been really, really cool to, um, really, really cool to see your progress and development. And, you know, as, as a teacher, as a coach, like you, you are the star student. And so like, I am, I'm so happy with your progress and I'll share a little more about that later, but sure. um, before we dive into the conversation, why don't you give kind of uh, everyone a, a basic introduction of who you are, what you do, uh, maybe some of the artists you've worked with. Yeah, of course. Um, so my name is Dave Dombrowski. Um, I grew up um, in Buffalo, New York, uh, got involved in playing drums, maybe when I was like 12, 13 years old. So kind of grew up playing in uh, bands like every kind of kid did back then. Um, mm. And then it turned into taking a little bit more serious and and moving to New York City about 10 years ago and kind of went the higher gun route. So um, that's kind of where my professional journey began. Um, mm. And that led me to moving to Nashville. And then um, I've always been in and out of LA for the, like the last six, seven years, even in, in, in between that journey. Um, and then just now recently landed back in LA, um, uh, this last, this past month. But, um, over the time I've, I've been lucky enough to play with, um, singer songwriter, Tyler Hilton, uh, you know, um, Kanan Cox, um, Thomas Ian Nicholas, um, you know, and then recently I've just gotten involved. I mean, man, there were so many, there's so many, more. oh, Eliza and Delusional, sorry, that was that was a band based out of Australia. Cool. Um, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm missing, I'm, I'm sure I'm leaving some people out because it's in that higher gun route. It's just always kind of just jumping from one tour to the next. Yeah. Um, but in the last year, I recently uh, passed after COVID, uh, took a new direction and, and um, got an opportunity to help with playback and drum teching for Avril Lavigne. So I was with her for the last uh, year. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's, I love that your story is um, probably of all the people I've had on the podcast so far it is a little unique in that. Um, I mean, you started playing drums, you started not necessarily with one band, like you said, as a hired gun and mm -hmm. you're in and out of different gigs. Mm -hmm. And then you go from that into going, okay, I need to get into this playback world um and then getting into drum teching and uh this last tour with avril what what was your take us back as as best as you can sure. what was like happening in your mind and your heart where you felt this need to go from uh i'm just david the drummer to david drummer slash playback tech extraordinaire like what what was the thing that went i have to kind of figure this out and learn this stuff sure um well i think like everybody we had a lot of time to think during covid yeah. So, um, once I, I think that was a big eye opener realizing like touring is not going to happen for a little while. Like I had to try to think of other avenues of like how, you know, I, I feel like in music, you kind of have to always wear multiple hats, yeah. you know, to kind of just that, that hustle, I guess. Um, it's hard to just, you know, you're, you're also just become more, you know, valuable to other people as well. If you're, if you can do multiple things. So, um, my time in Nashville, I definitely, you know, and I definitely got asked a lot more to do running, running tracks as a drummer. I don't know why that's, that stigma has always been like the yeah. drummers, the guy, I mean, it's, it's bad enough. We're, I mean, it's, it's hard enough. We're using all four limbs. Like, I don't know how we're supposed yeah. to, you know, so, um, I kind of just figured it out. Like 
at a base level just to get by um, at the time. But so I knew when I had more time off the road, like when COVID hit, it was like, okay, maybe I need to really invest in, in really understanding how playback works. Mm. Um, and so that's how um, learning about your, your website well, came about and, and uh, taking your, your course. <laughs> So yeah, would, really to, cool. to answer your question, it'd be I would just like around. It's actually one of the time I had to, to think was during COVID was uh, when I had all that downtime to kind of re reassess and reevaluate. Like, okay, how can I get out of you know when things do start resuming? You know, what other skill sets can I can I get better at as well? Yeah. So I think I, I want everyone. I don't want anyone to miss that. There's a couple of things I want to pull out of what you just said to like sure. camp on for a second. One, um, this was something you were already doing to a certain capacity, right? You're playing yes. drums, doing yep. a little playback. And I think it's really, really hard for people on the road that are getting paid to do what they're doing to sometimes pause and reflect and go, huh, I wonder if there's a better way to do this. Um, yeah. You know, and, and that's that's like I always this is overused on every podcast I do. But that's why the phrase humbly confident, humbly curious, like. I really believe that because you, you were getting paid to dr play drums and to do Ableton and you knew the piece of Ableton you needed to know. You were doing it proficiently enough to continue to get rehired. Mm -hmm. But you said, I want to go deeper on this. Like, I want to really master this. I want to understand why, not just how kind of thing. And so I think how that's uh, like how important to you is just that mindset of like, I need to go further. I need to go <clears> deeper on this. Yeah, it, it's super important. It's like, and it's, and then I think it just goes to every aspect of my life. Like, I just don't want to leave any stones unturned, like, mm. with just knowing as much as I possibly can. I've always been very curious and always want to learn something new. And I don't, I want to be able to just walk away and say, I gave it everything I possibly mm. had in a sense of knowledge and, and understanding. So I, I can't live with just like, you know, half-assing something and just be like okay yeah. cool i got by and it's it worked and it's it's fine so yeah. i mean i i mean i still take i still take you know even during covid um you know i still take drum lessons because it's like i just kind of always want to learn and you know I, you just don't want to be content with just where you're at so i mean there's, that's yeah. just where my my that's that's how my brain operates yeah that's that's really good i mean this may be slightly offensive as uh, i'm assuming you're a bills fan but it's like even Tom Brady, even Tom Brady has yeah. a quarterback coach, you know, it's like sure. the, the best of the best, um, like still get coached all the time. So I think yeah. that's, that's super, super wise. I, I want to, okay. So I want to go back and then we'll, we'll continue to move forward in your story. Another thing that stuck out to me that you said, um, was, was just the, okay, I'm a drummer. And then now I'm a drummer. Uh, and you, you, you pointed this out. I got a, some flack a couple months ago when I said, <laughs> Uh, why drummers shouldn't run tracks. And I think a lot of people got offended by that. But the heart of what I was saying was, hey, let's pick the guy or girl that literally is using every limb of their body and say, oh, by the way, as you do that and do it expressively, uh, can you also manage this computer? And it's like, right. can we pick somebody that, you know, maybe it's their feet free or could use one hand to reach over and do something. So um, that was the heart of what I was saying is like, why do we have to pick on drummers all the time? But sure. um, could you speak to for a second, like particularly young, younger musicians, um, maybe even younger drummers. So David, you know, 10, 15 years ago that you have a desire to play drums and you start to get hired for your first gig and you have that first experience where a production manager, a tour manager, even the artist walks over and dumps the bag of crap on the drum riser and goes, here's our playback rig. And you're like, I just want to play drums. Like, I don't want to do playback. Like, why can't I just play drums? What's what's encouragement or what are things you could share to someone that's just getting started to help them understand maybe fairly or you know, right or wrong, fairly or not fair, um, why that's an important thing for you to also adapt and make part of your skill set. I, I think because you just have to, you have to go in open-minded and you have hmm. to be willing to sometimes maybe do something that you are, even if you're afraid of doing it. Like I, like I know I was just petrified of like, you know, Ableton when I looked at it the first time I'm like man this is this does doesn't you know this is what like is a different this? language what is this yeah. yeah um but you you do you do you have to because you never you never know like what other opportunities that might you know present themselves by doing something that you never thought you, you'd be doing like I mean it, it's it happened to me multiple times so it's mm -hmm. like you just have to be open-minded like you can't be 
you can't be just like I said, I think the people that really succeed in this industry, they do wear multiple hats. They are, they're, yeah. they're capable of doing multiple things. And, um, it just goes a longer way. I mean, for your career and for yourself too. So mm. it's just, it's just being open-minded, you know what I mean? And just, yeah. and, and even if, even if you give it a try and you realize like, that's not for you, then at least, but again, you open that door and you at least gave that a, that a try. So you, you're not going to know if it even is for you unless you try it. Yeah, that's wise. Yeah, super wise. I mean, that's the thing I always tell people when they're hesitant to like my teaching or, hey, move from session view to arrangement view. I'm like, listen, just try it. And sure. if you don't like it, you can always go back. Like no yeah. one's like you're yeah. free to make your own decisions. So do whatever yeah. you want to there. Yeah, just because they're telling you that you need to do this doesn't mean it's going to be their thing forever. You know, it's, yeah, so. That's really, really good. Well, can you can you talk a little bit about the um, um, the 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 drive, the desire you had that pointed you towards signing up for the coaching cohort? Um, uh, you know, you, it's obviously during COVID. We've all got yep. some downtime. Sure. Um, what what kind of led you again to like I need to dive further into this? And then maybe share, I mean, share as, as much or as little as you want to of like your experience of going through that. What was beneficial? What you gained? And kind of how that was like helpful to you and your experience. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, being like, I, I legit was on a tour with a band. Um, they were, they're, the band there was, they're from Australia and, and we had like a week break. So I went to go home to visit my family and I, so I legit got stuck home. So I didn't even oh, wow. have at the begin with, I didn't even have a drum set home to, I had nothing to, so it's like, <clears throat> um, you know, that's one of the things where kind of like when I realized I was going to be here longer than just a week, you know, a month or so I had to like, okay, so what, what else can I really learn? So that's when I said, okay, I can take advantage of, of, you know, so I was doing research and I was like looking online and like I said, like YouTube could be so great in so many ways, but, um, you can just, there's so much information where it's like, it's hard to pick a, a proper, you know, direction, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. so when I came about your site, um, what I loved was the, the fluidity of it and just like the structure of, you know, the do's and the don'ts and like, this is how you would start. This is, and the, you know, this is the result you're going to get. This is the benefit of using this. And so, um, that was super appealing to me. Like, that's how I like to learn. I like to re uh, learn just like, you know, um, like a rule book, basically, you know, mm -hmm. like here's steps one through 10, you know, and if you yeah. followed, you know, so, um, so that's that's what was that was super appealing to to me was uh, on your site on how to learn. That's great. That's really cool. So was that gave anything, me more. Yeah. Yeah. That I'm just wondering. Was there anything that um, maybe if you picked like one thing out of that? And I promise this whole podcast is not. Hey, David, tell me how awesome. No, I am. no. And tell no, me about my no, experience. No, but no, no, no. no, no. Uh, like. It, was there one thing out of that experience that surprised you or that you learned that you still hold on to now, or maybe it was a theme or a specific, um, uh, process or a tip and trick in Ableton, you know, something that through there, you're like, oh man, I still use that every day, every gig I'm on, or that's kind of changed the way I view or, or do things now. Um, hmm. Oh, I, I would say. I would say definitely uh, your your templates are are great when it comes to building mm. building sets and um, because you give everybody like an option of like here's 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 so many ways you could you can actually really do it so it's like but it's super important obviously having like the click and having mm. your um, your tempo guide and then also you know your sections like like sections I think is just like is super keen on on just keeping everything super neat and, and it just, and fluidity is really, really important. So it, whatever yeah. makes it the most, you know, so I think, yeah, like you're just the way that you set up the template, honestly, to run, run the tracks is, is mm. like super helpful. And I just, I mean, that's, that's kind of like how I'm going to continue to, you know, help, you know, even in projects that I would work on is your, is your template is your templates. Yeah. That's really good to hear. So let's talk, um, Let's talk, how did this, you know, your hired gun, you're playing drums, you're doing Ableton, you go through the coaching cohort. Um, how did this Avril gig come about for you? And then talk a little bit about like what your responsibilities were that you were hired to do and how that differed from like what you've done in the past. Sure. So it's kind of a funny story. I was again, still home and um, some band started touring again. I, I, I actually kind of went back out in LA and, and 21 temporary for a couple months and did some work and had some, had some gigs. And then, um, 
<clears throat> my friend's band was coming through town and, and, and uh, I went to go check out, you know, just catch up with them. I haven't seen them since, since COVID. We both, we both lived in Nashville at the time. And um, he had a friend that was, you know, tagging along for that week and then found out that that guy was Avril's production manager. And then they were looking mm. for someone to help uh, facilitate playback because the, the musical director uh, operates it on stage, but he just needed, he needs someone to do all the ins and outs of it, basically, you know, editing, mm. help with the editing, the whatever, whatever the, you know, whatever the setup would be. And then they needed a drum tech. And then they, I think they also were looking for someone that is also a player as well, because COVID was still a thing, you know, mm. and, and, and God forbid if someone went down um, drums or whatever and whatnot that, you know, would they have people in house that at least would know the set to kind of, you know, get, you know, get through. So, um, yeah, it was kind of like, I was kind of like hired as like a hybrid of a little bit of everything to kind of just, but mainly focus on helping with the playback and drum tacking and, and, uh, and keys as well. So how, how much do you feel like, um, your experience as a drummer being in bands before, like how much did that, I mean, obviously I'm kind of reading between the lines, but it feels like that was a huge piece of it. But because of that kind of hybrid thing, as opposed to, I, I guess, let's compare you to someone who all they've ever done is play back. They're not a musician. They, sure. you know, they've never set up a drum set before, keyboard rig before. Like, um, how do you feel like your previous experience, your musicianship kind of played into you getting that gig and your success on that gig? Um, it definitely played a huge part, especially from the teching side, because, you know, growing up in, in bands that I played in, and obviously you don't have budgets for techs and stuff. So you're always setting up mm. your own gear. Uh, so I, I know how to set up drums, you know, I know my instruments. So it's like, okay, yeah. I could definitely, I could definitely do that. Um, you know, same thing with keys. It's like, you know, been around enough instruments to kind of know how things are set up and then, you know, how they operate. But um, I, I'm not gonna lie. Like if I didn't take your course in the, the, the time that I did, um, I definitely would not not been prepared enough to to take on that type of level of of helping mm. with playback because at that point, like you know, before that, I, I again, like I said, I was just self taught, you know, and yeah. I didn't, I personally didn't think I would have been qualified enough to to help in that situation. There could have there could have been someone else as well. Um, not saying that I wouldn't be able to have learned it quickly, or you know, but yeah, like your your the confidence definitely grew being like, yeah, we can, I can do this because of, mm. of, of taking your course. That's awesome. That's great. Were there any, um, fun, crazy experiences that came out of that, uh, that run that you got? Well, first off, how long were you out on the road for the Avril tour? Let's start there, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, we started back in April, end of, end of April, May, uh, sorry. 22. So 22, sorry, all the, all the timing is a, a blur right now, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, basically April, May of 22, we, we got into production rehearsals in Canada and, um, we were basically toured, um, up until just this past May of 23. Um, wow. we had some, we had some time off here and there, obviously like the holidays, but it was a consistent, like, you know, it was full Canadian tour, full U S tour, uh, all the festivals, um, Japan, Brazil, uh, and then just this past May was, uh, six weeks in Europe. So wow, it was a full, it was crazy. a full, it was a full year of touring, uh, basically. Yeah, that's um, a lot. yeah. So, yeah. And, and honestly, like the, the craziest story that happened was, uh, we, like I said, we were in Canada for production rehearsals and the, the first show was, was at the venue that, you know, um, Casino Rama was, was the first, the first show and they were able, they were able, able to have us, um, stay there and, and do production rehearsals right out of there. So we were able to set up and keep everything ready to go for the first show. Oh, cool. Um, great. but yeah, I mean the, the, you know, that morning of the very first show, our, our MD got sick. So, um, there had to be a situation where, how do we figure out we can continue this show? Because like I mentioned, like our MD actually runs, runs the playback. I would just set it up. So, um, I just got into a situation, um, thrown into the fire and, and, uh, be able to, you know, stand on the key riser and do some, key, do some keys and, and run the, run the whole show start to finish. Um, you know, and, uh, it went, it went great. It went, you know, That's I don't awesome. think I, had, I don't think I had enough time to really, 
to really think about like, oh my God, what is happening? Because you know, we had to go we had to, we had to go right into rehearsals with the band and and make sure everything is working, functioning properly with with the playback side and also coordinating with our front of house and our lighting lighting, making sure all everything is is good to go. So it was it was um a lot of preparation in a short amount of time, but yeah. Um yeah, it, it, it worked out. It, it worked out great. We had a we had a, we had a blast. It was, the show went great. She, you know, it went awesome. And then, yeah. So that was that was probably the craziest. That's pretty crazy. Craziest, it, craziest show. Uh, yeah, the experience. I, I would have to say. All right. So we'll be right back to Dave's story in just a moment. But if you're listening to this and you're going, well, I can't imagine being in that situation where I suddenly get called upon to hop up on stage and run playback and be confident enough in this. I don't feel like I have the skill set yet. I don't feel like I have the confidence in my skills. I want to help you get there. I think the best way you could do that is enrolling in my all access community. And when you do that, you get access to every single course I've ever created. You get access to every single patch, preset, and template that I've ever created. Plus, you now get access to group coaching. Every single week, you will get a call with me where I will answer any questions that you have and I will help you implement and execute on the information that you find within the site. So if you want a proven plan that students like Dave, thousands of students across the world in various types of venues and situations like Dave, like Dave have implemented and are currently using, then all you need to do is head to from studio to stage.com slash subscribe, click the link in the show notes of this episode, and you too can find yourself with the confidence that Dave had when he was called upon to step up and make it happen. Now let's continue with hearing a little bit more about Dave and his story. Um, and again, uh, what a star example of a student he is. So it's like, hey, we want to hire you to, uh, don't worry, you don't have to be on stage. You don't have to yeah. know the songs. We just want you to press space bar. Um, but oh my gosh, now you need to know the songs and be on stage and look the part. Uh, and it's your very first show. So good luck. Yeah, yeah, very, yeah, yeah. Very, yeah, very first show of the tour. It's not like, it's not like we've, uh, we're a couple of weeks into you know, working out the kinks of the of yeah. the show. It's like, no, this was this was, yeah, first first show of the tour. That's amazing. So yeah. I, as you were as you were talking, I um, and I don't remember the guy's name, and honestly, I don't want to give him any airtime. But there was um, he's he's a drummer, and yeah. uh, I couldn't even think of his name if if I tried. But uh, he posted something recently where he was basically dogging on. Uh, drummers, you know, viewing like Instagram stories of drummers sharing like a point of view of them playing, hearing the guide track. And his his essential argument was like, hey, if you ever want to be a musician of substance, you need to like play and not, you know, he was essentially trying to say, if you're a real good drummer, a good musician, you don't need tracks. You shouldn't be playing with guide cues, with clicks. Um, and he used an example of like Steve Gadd and then moving the Clapton tour or canceling a date because Steve couldn't play or whatever. And it's like, well, that's sure. one Steve Gadd. So sure. let's bring it back to like mere mortals here. But sure, sure. Um, yeah. but he, I think the point he was trying to make was like you as a drummer, as a musician, you should you should have a like um, a, a personality about you and how you play, which I agree as a musician. I was a musician mm -hmm. way before I got into Ableton playback I, I agree but the thing i didn't agree about what he was saying was it it, it kind of came from a like elitist perspective of like he, he was in a scenario or at least it felt like he was in a scenario where he could just be the drummer and was unaware of the hundreds and sometimes thousands of people that it takes to pull off a show um and a modern show is so dependent on playback and you could say you could say oh well music isn't what it used to be blah 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 but I, the bands that you're thinking of that you love that, you know, don't use playback, I know they're playback tech, you know, and can say they are using playback. All those old bands that don't yeah. use tracks, you know. Yeah, they, they're um, using something. They're using something. But can you can you paint a picture again? And we get a wide variety of people listening to the podcast that some sure. are playback tech, some want to get into this. But like, what is the role of playback or playback tech on the road on a tour like that where you're gone for a year, you're all over the world? Um, why is that such an essential piece to where if, if the person that's sick doing playback goes down that they're like, Hey, you need to come in here and make this happen. Like we have to have this for this show. <clears throat> well, I, I, like, I truly believe that like running tracks is just an extension of the band because there's so many beautiful elements that are in recordings nowadays, like that weren't. 15 20 years ago sometimes you know with modern technology yeah. like we, we we evolve like we're changing if you're just not if you're not 
if you're not adapting to times, then you're just, you're just, that's, that's on you, you know, but, yeah. uh, for that, that just goes back to the point of that, that guy you were talking about. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, there's, there's so many, so it's like an extension of the, of the, of the band. It's, it's part of the band, I believe. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it's bringing out all those cool elements that you hear on, on a record or like in your Spotify. And, and you're just like, when you can hear all those elements live as well, it's, it's super cool. So what makes it super yeah. important is like, it's being aware of all that and, um, and, and being a playback tech, um, it's kind of, I've always, I've always kind of felt like it's, it's the extension in my experience. It's like, it's almost the extension of the musical director as well, yeah. because like you, you are, you have to understand like social, you know, the cues and when, when to start the next song, like what's the fluidity of the show. So it's like, it's, it's not just hitting space bar. It's, it's really yeah. understanding the elements and, and if, of all that, you know, combined together too, is like when, when we're going to start the, start the song when is when is it finished and you know that all has to do with like all the lighting and and it, it's it's the whole production it's it's a huge yeah. part of it yeah it's it's yeah. it's being keen on that yeah i think I, you brought up a really good point which i you know i joke and i say you, you press space bar um yeah but yeah. but you you mentioned such a big piece of that is the like the the awareness of knowing like when to start a song versus letting it breathe versus yeah. um, e- even that thing that you get with artists or other musicians. I-, I always say good bands have inside jokes and you get to that pl- point where you play enough with a band where, you know, me as a guitar player, I can look over at the drummer and without saying anything, we know exactly what the other one's going to do. You know, I can, I can build and like palm mute and, and build dynamically with the drummers. They're playing their toms like just perfectly. We, we sync up. But you get to this point with even an artist where sometimes they tell you to do something and based on your history with them, you understand they said this, but they really meant this. And so right. without being the guy to say, well, excuse me, actually, you just know, OK, I'm just going to make the change that I really think and believe that they wanted. Mm-hmm. And so there's there's something to that, like non-technical thing that's maybe you call it people skills maybe you call it emotional intelligence whatever you call it but that like um my wife and i call it we're trying to teach our kids it's like reading the room like walking into a room and and understanding what's happening but there definitely is a sense i'm so glad you said that because there is a sense of when doing playback of just being able to read the room and read the dynamics of how do, how does the band feel about this? How does the artist feel about this? Are they maybe a little less confident in this section or this particular night? And so we can, you know, turn the guide up or turn the click up a little bit, you know, talk to the monitor engineer and have them turn that up a little bit for the artist more than they usually would, because mm-hmm. our goal is to help them succeed. But are there any examples you can think of, of, of things like that, where it's like, this isn't a technical skill and maybe it's not even necessarily a soft skill in a traditional sense, but it's something that helps you read the room as a playback tech, basically. Yeah, I think a hundred percent it does. I, um, I think my experience helped with honestly, I actually playing, playing, playing drums. And when I got asked to do, you know, run tracks and stuff, you kind of, mm. you have that like bird eye view of like everyone as a drummer too. So it's like, yeah, you just kind of, developed i just kind of felt like i like over time just developed that skill of just like understanding the room better um you know which was i think very beneficial with you know uh over time and having that experience and and just you know working that doing that that gig for for avril as well that's really good and i i love to and i meant to mention this earlier but i love to just like the story of um of how you got the gig like you you know and correct me if i'm wrong it it didn't feel like you were out like okay who's on avril's gig i'm gonna find them on linkedin or facebook i'm gonna go to where they are i'm gonna be happen to be like oh hey how are you i happen to be a drummer playback tech you just were like living your life you had going back to where we started you had been preparing for a situation and this opportunity kind of landed in your lap like that's kind of how it was right yeah i like I said, because like when I when I took your course, like I was just trying to better myself. I wasn't really, to be honest, between you and it, like I wasn't trying to to get into the field of of doing playback. It was more yeah. like, I, how do I get better at it for when I get asked to do playback as a drummer? So it's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> I didn't, yeah, exactly. So I wasn't like seeking out the type of work that that it kind of happened. But like I said, it was just it just kind of fell, fell in the laps, but it's also like, you know, over the years of, 
of being, you know, uh, in different situations with um, different bands and, and building relationships that mm. just kind of led to that too. It's, you know, like I said, it was like one of my buddy's bands and like, it was a friend of his and it was just like, so it's, it stayed within the community of like, you know, all the, all the, you know, networking and, and relationships I built over the years. Um, but yeah, I did not, like I said, yeah, you, like you said, I did not uh, out seek on like LinkedIn or see what yeah. bands are touring for, from a playback standpoint. Um, I mean, I, the only other work I was doing at that time was the, you know, like I said, I was, I was back out in, in LA in 21, uh, end of 21 before the, before I got offered the Avril gig where, um, I was using the skill set that I learned from you and I had a couple showcases and then mm. I did a small two week run with, um, ah, Grabitz is the other artist I worked with. Um, he's like more in, he you know he needed like the full production as well because his music more electronic um okay. so you know i was able to use that skill set already um but from a drumming standpoint so but not just yeah. strictly you know helped you know to do the playback stuff so that's really good what um i, I always love trying to go back for people yeah. that are starting out people that um again are, are you 10 years ago um what advice do you have for them on, I mean, you talked about it's years and years of relationship. So that, that feels dawning if I'm just getting started and I'm like, sure, you know, what does this mean? But like, what, what do you have as some, some pointers or some tips for people that want to like break into this field to do what you're doing, what you've done? Like, what's just one practical thing they can do to start, to start to build those relationships and, and make those connections with people? <clears throat> I mean, don't afraid, don't be afraid to ask. You know, like mm. ask for help. Like, you know, I think a lot, some people think, you know, asking is, is being like a burden, but, you know, asking, asking people for help and like, you know, advice. And so like the advice I would give would just be like, all the relationships I built were pretty organic, you know? So it's, it's, um, it always starts off with just meeting people at shows or, or, mm. uh, through other mutual friends at, at, at parties or, you know, like that's, I'm at like in a more organic setting and you just kind of yeah. just end up talking about things in general. And it, it just, it weirdly just kind of would then turn into a career path, like, you know, like you're, whatever you're doing in, in life. And then in, that just kind of keeps snowballing into conversations. So, I mean, I guess that's, I, yeah, that's, that's like the best advice I can give is just like starting organic relationships mm. because I, I think the relationships are more important than sometimes like the work that you're you're getting out yeah. of it as well so because then that that just everything else just is a building block and, it, and it'll, it'll 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 grow and blossom into something that you're you're looking for in the you know in the future so yeah, it's just yeah it's just yeah it's just i don't you know if in the music industry in, in general it's like you know obviously nowadays it's like having you know, you you can do it through socials as well. Like I wouldn't be afraid mm. to ask, you know, DM someone that like you're really into. And, and if you just do it organically and it's, it's, it's the yeah. way you approach it, um, yeah. I think goes a longer way than, than just, you know, trying to hit someone right away and being like, Hey, I'm trying to do this. Like, what do I do? You know? Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> and I, I did, um, I guess a couple of weeks ago now as we're recording this, I did a podcast with Martin Roberts, who's a playback tech and worked with a lot of folks and the way Martin and I got connected is he just sent me a DM on Instagram and never talked to him before. And he just said, Hey, I just want to thank you for the content you're putting out. Um, it, it's helping a lot of people grow, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, and that, you know, Martin and I now have a relationship where if I think of a, if a gig comes my way and I'm trying to find the perfect person and I feel like that fits, you know, Martin fits the bill. Like he, he's obviously doing these, these massive gigs. He doesn't need my help. But right. the point is if he had reached out and said, Hey, Will, I, you know, I've seen your content, but I know how to make it 10 times better because of my experience, right. blah, blah, blah. I would be like, who is this guy? Why? Yeah. You right. Know? Right. Uh, but just that organic, like sometimes we forget to be humans and just yeah. go, Hey man, thanks for what you're doing. I love yeah. what you're doing. Just being present around people. Uh, and showing them that we appreciate them can go such a, a long way uh, in that process. Hundred percent. And I and I actually did this a similar thing with an, uh, another fellow drummer that's based in the UK. That he put out a bunch of video uh, videos and classes on like you know being the more you know with being drum like a drummer and like getting samples and like you know how to mm. be a hybrid drummer when it comes yeah. to you know whether using rolling pads or an SPDX and. And I, you know, I was trying to dive more into that as well. And I, and I said the same thing to him. I said, Hey man, I thanks for the course. Like, 
Um, I have a couple of follow-up questions about it, but you know, you know, thanks for putting out this kind of content. It's been really, you yeah. know, and same thing. We, we, we kind of, you know, slowly been staying in contact and he always, I said, if any other questions you have, just, you know, don't, don't, don't hesitate to, to ask. Is that Joe, Joe Clegg? Is that who you're talking about? Yeah. 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 yeah I just, uh, similar thing. I just messaged Joe. I haven't taken his course, but uh, I saw what he's doing and messaged him probably a week ago and said, Hey man, keep up the good work. Like, yeah, love what you're doing. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just such a better way to, I don't know, I guess some people maybe are a little more driven and they're a little more like, I have my list of people that I will build relationships with that get me to this, that get me to that. But man, it's just such a better way to live to be like, hey, I, I want to tell this person, thank you for what you've done. I want to reach out to this person. Like, that's just, to me, that's just the way I operate. Like, that yeah. just feels like a much better way to do things. 100%. Like, I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be like the way I look at it too is like, I wouldn't be where I am in my career if it wasn't for the people I surrounded myself with as mm -hmm. well. Like I, I'm just, I'm just a byproduct of like everyone I've learned from. Yeah. So, I mean, cause I, you, that's, then that's what I've been saying. Like you just, it's okay to ask for help. Like that's, that's, that's the whole purpose of learning. Like that's why we go to school, right? We, 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 te yeah. we get, we, we learn from our teachers. So it's, it, there's, it's the same thing when it like in any industry. Um, so, I, I was been I've been very lucky to play with a lot of great musicians and, and work with a lot of great people where like I just kind of like if you just are willing to sit back there and just like, you know, learn everything and ask questions. And yeah, I, I mean, you'd be surprised and like how much you can really take in on all that. <clears throat> yeah. And I mean, I, I say this almost every podcast, but the the more people I meet that are very advanced in their field, I mean, let's just, let's make it very practical playback. Like the more I meet playback techs that are out on the road with major artists, they're the most teachable, humble, asking questions, asking me questions. Like they, they're just, they're, they want to learn. Like they, yeah. they're not just going, I have knowledge. I am an expert. Don't, you know, I have nothing to learn from you. They're literally looking at every single person and going, what can I learn from this person? What can I learn from that person? Like, uh, again, yeah. such a better way to live than just closed minded about absolutely everything. hundred you know? percent. Yeah. hundred percent. And I, I, I approach that even in my playing too. It's like, like I said, still yeah. taking lessons and still learning from, you know, even Avril's, Avril's drummer too on certain things. Like I want to get better at, and it's just like, Hey man, like, how did you approach that? You know? Um, I, I, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's all right in front of you, you know, even, even with yeah. social media now too, it's like, you can easily, you know, gain accessibility to people very quickly and, and it's, it's okay to ask. <clears throat> yep. That's good. I want to, um, I want to start to wrap this up, but before we do, I want to, um, ask a very, very like kind of tactical, let's think about the Avril tour that you just wrapped up. Um, what were your, what were your like day to day responsibilities? What did that look like in those different roles and how did that kind of play out, uh, practically on, on the tour? Yeah. So, um, from on the cruise side, you know, we definitely are like first in, first, uh, first in, and like almost last out. Um, hmm. So, my day to day, like I said, I kind of wore multiple hats at one point. Um, so my my day to day would look like uh, <clears throat> first would I would take care of you know once the stage was ready to go because the stage was built, hmm. uh, getting the getting the drums all all situated, getting the key situated. And then work on the technical side. So, like um, on the drumming side, we had the Roland, we had the Roland SPDX, we had a couple triggers. So, making sure all that's patched in properly for audio, hmm. um, getting the keys all fired up, and then then I would work on the on the computer as well. So, um, on this gig, we we had the two Mio um, boxes. So we, we had stage left and stage right Ethernet running the program changes. So nice. it's um, it was basically just firing up the computers and and in Ableton and just making sure all everyone's getting program changes, everyone's operating, you know, in that capacity. And then um, if there was any last second changes, you know, me and the musical director would come in and and work on any edits or uh, anything that has to be done prior to sound check or even after sound check, maybe even after sound check, yeah, there might be okay. like a, an editor too. So, um, yeah, so that was just basically setting up everything and then properly making sure everything's functioning. And then, um, like I said, putting the, the MD in the best possible scenario he could, so he can just do his thing, you know, with the keys and then just firing the show as, as, as it went on. Yeah. And, and during the show, this is a question I'm starting to try to ask people because I think it changes based on role 
position, whatever. Sure. During the show, did you have a responsibility? If so, like where were you in relation to the stage? What did you do during the show? Yeah. So I sat right behind, I was right on stage, right behind Chris, um, okay. the drummer. So, um, it was the perfect situation for me because or position, because I was, uh, stage left was the keyboard player. So if anything happen on a technical side, whether it be playback or on his side, like I can easily get to him and same thing with Chris. I was right behind Chris. So, um, I was kind of in the thick of it, right. We're in the middle. So it's, I didn't have to seem like I had to be running up and down the the staircase if if anything did happen. That's great. That's awesome. And it, it feels like to me, um, I mean, everything is just skill set and you have David as drummer, David is drummer plus playback tech. Now you have David as drum tech, keys tech, you know, backline to a certain extent. Yeah. And um, and I think the beauty of all that is that means you can now be hired just to do playback. You can now be hired just to do drum tech if you wanted, you know, like if that's a gig you, you are interested in or you could be hired to be drummer and playback. And so I think building that skill set is so important because it's not just like it's not just okay i did this so that the next gig i get hired on i can do this same exact gig right and so that it's just opening up tons and tons of possibilities right so that whatever opportunity because you don't know a week from now you know i may get a message from me that you're like dude i'm going out on the road with so-and-so playing drums and i'm not doing playback or i'm going out on the road doing playback but having all those different skills and knowing them well just gives you so many more opportunities yeah i think this goes back to what, what i was alluding earlier in our conversation it was just like it's it's learning, it's wearing all those hats. And, and Mm. especially in music, the music industry is trying to be not as knowledgeable as you can in multiple things, because you, like, you're right. You just never know what opportunities are going to, you know, percolate. Like, for example, the gig with, I mean, it's a byproduct of like the gig with Avril. Like I, again, I, I took your course, you know, to better myself, not thinking like it would lead into something of a role that the the opportunity that I've gotten with her and, Mm. and her team. So, um, yeah, you're hundred percent right. That's great. So, uh, David, again, it was, we start to kind of land the plane. What, yep. uh, you just finished up this tour, this mammoth, you know, year long tour being gone. Um, what's next for you? Like, what do you, what do you plan hope to do? Um, will you be back all, out on the road? Like, do you have any current plans? Um, you know, right now, like, what do you kind of hope? Let's, let's say you can say, this is my future and what I will do speak that into yeah. existence yeah, for yeah. Us for a moment. so ideally um well i just i recently just got settled back into la uh, in the last month and a half so i'm, I'm getting settled um back in a, a, a place um you know that i want to call home again um yeah and you know right now the ideal is to take myself off the road for the rest of the year um obviously if you know i'm not completely closing my mind on it like if an opportunity comes that maybe would benefit like where i think would be a good fit for myself and the party, then absolutely I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. But I'm not really putting myself out there right now. Um, I kind of just want to take a step, a step back and reevaluate some things. Um, but ideally, like I, I'm, I'm coming up with some ideas now that I had this experience with in the last year or so um, with, with playback is I want to maybe help consult uh, touring bands and put together like, you know, uh, sets for bands that are, you know, that maybe don't have a playback, but they, they're going to be able to function on the road themselves, but they don't know how to approach it and like how to put all the, you know, sets yeah. together in Ableton. So I'm kind of diving in a little bit of that and just doing some more homework and like how I can uh, approach that and maybe be more in town. Um, still trying to get back to playing the way I was in 20 geez. So, so at end of 20 when I was on tour and uh, okay. playing, playing full time. So I'm kind of like working myself back, uh, the way I was uh, performing in 2020 and hoping by maybe next year that I'd be back playing, um, you know, full time again as, as a drummer and, and who knows, maybe, maybe doing some playback. Like I said, uh, I would be open to, to kind of it all. Like I said, I'm, I'm very open-minded to everything. I'm never going to just be narrow-minded and say no to something, but I just, I just do know that I I just do want to take some time off the road and kind of to reassess and reevaluate like what I want to kind of do going forward. But I think I really want to lean into, um, using the skill sets that I was able to acquire from your, your course and, and be able to help out other bands that are like looking, you know, they're always kind of touring and they just need help on a playback side. And like I said, it can be as yeah. simple as maybe just even building their set being like, Hey guys, 
I have 12, or here, Dave, I have 12 songs that we just don't have time to put in a, a, a playback set. Would you be able to, you know, get us up and running functioning? So we have this like two week tour. So that's kind of, I think that's where I kind of want to start doing that stuff in town. That's great. I have a few more things I want to say before we wrap up, but before I forget, yeah. people listening to this right now that go, I love David's story. I love his personality, his vibe. How can people get in contact with you if they're interested in going, hey, can you help my band make this happen? Or can you help us with playback gigs? What's the best way for them to reach out to you? Yeah, so the best would be honestly uh, my socials, um, my Instagram, which is Dave underscore Dombrowski, uh, spelled D-O-M-B-R-O-W-S-K-I. Cool. Or uh, or just email, uh, which is ddombrowskidrums at gmail.com. Sweet. We'll make sure to put that in the show notes. And again, cool. um, it, it, again, if you have questions about this, you want to reach out to David directly, like, please use that information to do that. Or again, like we said, just even say, hey, I listened to your interview. I really appreciate it. You know, thanks for sharing your info. Yeah. Um, please, please do that. So before we before we sign off. Um, I just wanted to say, and I waited till we were recording to do this so that it's like publicly on record, but I just want to say, man, how proud I am of uh, what you've done and your progress. And I want to clarify, I'm not proud of you because you went through my coaching cohort and got a gig and I can put you on the page as a testimonial of look what David Dombrowski did. And I'm so proud of him. I, yes, that's a piece of it, but I'm really proud of you. And it's cool because coming into this conversation, I was kind of formulating this and you just literally, you kind of laid it out. I'm proud of you because you stepped into a situation where you went, I don't know if I'm ready for this. I've never done this in its full capacity before. And you stepped into it and said, I, you know, I'm going to do it, man. Like I, I, I feel equipped to do this, um, where I'm missing maybe the knowledge. I'm going to gain it really quickly, but I'm going to step into the unknown and do this because I, I see so many people in my life and in friends and in students that, that want to do what you just did for a year, but they're unwilling to take that step into the unknown and the, the, the terrifying feeling of what if I failed and you just, you ran straight into it. And again, you <laughs> did the work to equip right. yourself, but I, I just, I want you to hear that. Like, I'm super proud to say David is a student of mine, not because he's a student of mine and got this, but because you're the type of person I want to have as a student, because you're, you're stepping into the unknown and you're achieving and you're doing like really awesome stuff because you've done the work and you're willing to step out into fear and go, I'm just going to take the next right step. Like I'm just going to do the next thing that I know to do and we'll see what happens. So, um, dude, I'm super proud of you, super proud of, uh, what you've done. Mm -hmm. And again, proud to have you as a student and have you listed on the testimonial page for that. Um, but any, any final words you want to share any, encouragement, anything you want to share with people listening to, to maybe help them step into the fear or whatever yeah. it is, however you want to end it. It's your yeah, show. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the kind words, Will. And, and like I said, and I, I truly believe that like we are a byproduct of the people we surround ourselves with. So mm-hmm. like, you know, and that's a testament of you. And, um, I really wouldn't have been where I w- was recently if it wasn't for you and the way you, that you you just, you teach the course and like how you have the course laid out. It's just, it's a true testament of your hard work and your passion too. So, I mean, um, you know, like I said, I, I think that we are a byproduct of the people that we surround ourselves with. So, um, yeah, any advice I would give as, as well, additional advice is just, just do it. Yeah. Just throw yourself in the, in the mm-hmm. fires and, and because that's, that's the best way you're going to learn. You can prepare yourself. Like I, like, I, like I said, like, I'm a, it's a, it's, I'm like kind of living proof of that. Like I sometimes at fault over will try to over prepare and I Mm -hmm. try to prepare as much as I possibly could, um, for this gig. But I obviously wasn't prepared in the sense of like stepping in and having to do the first show with them. So it's like, you know, but that was a great valuable lesson. You just kind of have to embrace it. Just kind of like live. It's okay to kind of like soak in that fear. Um, it just means that you care. Um, So just kind of in, instead of being afraid of it, just kind of embrace it and just yeah. run with it because you're going to end up learning so much. And even if, even if things don't work out, like you're going to learn from those mistakes, like everything I've learned from, like I've stumbled and so many times I still stumble and I'm still learning. Like, but every time I'm stumbling, like I'm learning a piece, something that I can just take value, you know, and move forward with. So like, just really go, good. just like, don't even think, just, just go and just like, just do it. Don't even hesitate. Be as prepared as you possibly can. But, but again, like, honestly, like 
you're going to, as much as you prepare, there's going to be things thrown at you that you're just not going to be prepared for. And you're just gonna have to yeah. live through it. And, but that's the best, but that's the best way of learning. So, yeah, that's really good, man. Well, David, thank you so much for your time. Those are wise words. We'll end with done is better than perfect. So stop waiting for perfect and just do it, make yeah. the decision, go, go sign up, go accept the gig that you're afraid to accept. It's all going to work out. You've prepared. Uh, So, David, yeah, thanks for your time. And again, um, for those of you listening, uh, we've put David's info in the show notes so you can reach out to him. Please do. If you listen to this episode and enjoyed it, um, reach out to David and say thanks. If you want to hire him for a gig, we've got his info there so you can reach out to him. Uh, But, yeah, thanks, David. Yeah, thanks, Will. Have a good day. All right. I hope you enjoyed that episode as much as I enjoyed my conversation with Dave. Honestly, this was one of, uh, one of those that I felt like could have gone on for many, many hours. Like if I was going to do the Rogan style of uh, from studio to stage uh, behind the Spacebar podcast, this really, truly could have been one of those episodes because I think Dave exuded just this desire to be prepared, uh, not just for an exact situation, but preparing for moments. And because of the work that he put in to grow his skill set, to learn the skill of being a playback engineer, it it has paid off for him multiple times over. And now he has this whole world of possibilities open to him, not just as a drummer, but as a drummer who can also do playback. And you can hire Dave to uh, be a drummer and run playback for you. And if you wanna get in touch with him, I've included information to contact him and to reach out to him and please do. Uh, If anything, to tell him, hey, I enjoyed your story, ask him some questions, see what he learned out on the road, um, or to actually hire Dave. But maybe you go, well, I don't need just a drummer. I need a playback engineer. Well, Dave has the skill set to do that as well. But maybe you're going, well, I don't you know, need a drummer. I don't need a playback engineer. I need a drum tech. I need someone who can tech for keyboards. I need someone who can help me set up on my playback gear. Again, because Dave has put in the effort and the time and he has uh, you know, taken a deep dive into the content available on From Studio to Stage. And because he has access to that content, he's committed to learn and apply it. He's the perfect candidate for you. Again, if you want the same confidence that Dave has, uh, again, I could give you the information, but you actually have to do the work to implement it. So if you're willing to do the work to implement it, please consider uh, joining me over in the all access community from studio to stage.com slash subscribe. Click the link in the show notes to join Dave as well as thousands of other students that are really just committed to sharpening their skills uh, growing their skill set, growing the tools that they have available to them. If that's you, then please head to from studio to stage.com slash subscribe to check that out. If not, and you just go, hey, I'm just here to hang out. I'm just an observer. Um, then please consider subscribing if you're over on YouTube, giving us a like, a thumbs up. You know what to do over there. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, consider giving us a rating or review um, or leaving a comment there. And most of all, the, the thing that really helps grow this particular show and this podcast is consider sharing this with someone that you think would enjoy this and would be benefited from this content. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for listening. And we'll see you next Monday here on Behind the Space Bar. Take care, everybody. Have a great week. Bye.